Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. These words shall be in thine heart. Teach them diligently unto thy children. Talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way. Bind them for a sign upon thine hand. They shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Write them upon the posts of thy house. This is Families of Faith. And thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Rumsey, and as always, I'm joined with my wife, Stacy. And this is another episode of Families of Faith. Some of you are watching maybe on YouTube or somewhere else. Some of you are listening on the radio or a podcast. However you're joining us today, we're glad that you're here. And we hope that the things that we discuss and share and talk about can be uh, a blessing and a help. We do. We do. We need prayer for that. That's right. So let's do that. All After right. we tell them the title. Yeah, what are we talking right. about today? Okay. The three C's we're looking at consistency, comparisons, and challenges. So just some lessons we've learned along the way and mm -hmm. maybe still are learning. That's right. <laughs> let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to share what you've been doing in our lives, as well as um, the Bible principles that are available to all of us. So as we discuss some of these things today, we pray that it can be a help and a blessing to uh, all of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, consistency. Stacy, why, why is consistency an important part of the mix, whether it's obviously marriage or parenting? Mm -hmm. Well, as parents, we stand in the place of God to our kids. So we're really giving our kids a clearer picture of God or a more distorted picture of God. So that's heavy <laughs> and, and, and it's sobering. It can be a little overwhelming um, also, but we, we just want to take the biblical principles of consistency um, how, if you're married, how that looks um, in your marriage and parenting, if you're single parenting or parenting with a spouse, that um, the importance of it and how, how biblically it should look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's different aspects to this consistency thing. Mm -hmm. um, but let's look at a couple Bible verses to start with here. Matthew 5, verse 37. Okay. I want to read that one. Sure. Uh, it's a simple one. It says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. But that's that's great that it's that clear. Um, how many times as moms and dads have we waffled or maybe said maybe or no one time, yes, another time? We want to be consistent so that they can trust us. We're really building a foundation of trust for our kids um, that we're going to be the same. God is with us the same. And one of the things we've learned with our kids um, and we often forget it, I think, and then we're reminded of it. But the kids usually just want a clear yes or no. And when mm. we get to the point in a conversation mm. or a day where we feel like there's a lot of pestering or repeated questions from the kids, very frequently when we, we finally get to a clear yes or a clear no. That's all they needed. That's it. And they're fine. <laughs> that's right. That's a good point. Uh, sometimes we complicate it. Just right. let it be clear the first time. Say it straight, and that's all they need. They'll yeah. take it. And, you know, if we have not been consistent, you know, if we've waffled back and forth, then the kids, uh, it's going to take a, a new kind of consistency on mm. our part, and it's going to take some time for the kids to realize, well, they said yes, they actually mean that, or they said no, and they actually mean that. So there is a time aspect there. We have to build this mm -hmm. uh, foundation if it hasn't already been laid. Mm -hmm. But the good news is, we, you know, you can start today doing that. Yes, and thankfully we have God as our perfect heavenly Father that gives us this perfect example. And I love Malachi three six. What does that one say? I am the Lord; I change not. Aren't we glad we have a God like that? I mean, I know some people don't serve a God like that. They serve a different type of God. But we have a God who doesn't change, and we can rely on Him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, that really explains also why we should not be afraid of God, mm. the fact that He does not change. 
And I think that this is one of the big reasons that frustration, uh, maybe fear sometimes, mm -hmm. comes into our relationship between us and our kids because they mm -hmm. don't know what to expect. Yes. And that is very frustrating for anybody, much yes. less a child, mm. um, if they don't know what kind of parent am I going to have today. Yeah. Um, so that mm. consistency is gives them a um, foundation and a something that makes them feel safe. Security. Well. Security. That's yes. what I'm looking for. Exactly. Um, so we want to be steady in our in our mood in our um, decisions and our answers with them that they can rely and depend upon us you know and there are some other uh, factors that um, can help build a consistent environment mm -hmm. for our families and and some of those are things like schedules mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. you know kids thrive on a schedule that they can plan on mm -hmm. and um that consistency from day to day is very important. Yes. Helps them to know, uh, reduces the questions and the confusion. And so the more stability that we can build into our, our daily schedules and just how we live life uh, helps us as parents be consistent, but it also transmits that security to our children as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking also within marriage and when you know, sometimes kids will learn, if I go to mom, I'll get this answer. If I go to dad, I'll get this answer. I'll go to mom or I'll go to dad. He'll let me. Or, And they can learn who they, they want to get an answer from. And so if you're married, you want to be on the same page. You want to be united in, <clears throat> in your answer and your decisions and, and in your parenting, your style and everything so that the kids don't try to pit one against the other. They know um, they're going to say the same thing. So it doesn't matter who I go to. And this is a very foundational principle in the Bible as well. Yes. All the way back in Genesis chapter 2, mm -hmm. when God creates Adam and Eve and then brings them together in marriage, Mm -hmm. It's in Genesis 2.24 that says they became one flesh. Unity. Um, you know, spiritually speaking, yeah. of course, there's the physical union in marriage as well. Mm -hmm. But there's, there needs to also be um, a unity in mindset and approach to parenting that has been um, thought out and discussed and agreed yes. upon, ideally, uh, before the kids arrive, yes. <laughs> or as as we're raising them, we need to continually have that contact point where we're making sure that we're on the same page mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. as mother and father, husband and wife. For sure, this this is critical and um, something that I don't think all parents put enough thought and prayer into beforehand. <clears throat> so, but again, you can start right yes, now. Yes, absolutely. No time like the present. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Yes. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Yes. Very well-known verse. It is. But it's not, uh, train up does not mean one day or one week, and then you've done it. You're done. You know, I this... learned that from gardening. It takes time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When the train up, you get this idea that it's all the way up. So... When you sign on to be a parent, you're signing on to all the way up. <laughs> you know, you got to be committed, uh, committed. That would have been another good C word <laughs> 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 to be consistent um, all the way through those, especially the critical parenting years. Yeah. And that takes patience. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, again, you could use the gardening analogy here and uh, it takes attention to the plants. I'm speaking on the stakes that I have made in the garden, right? <laughs> you have to go and look at your plants and uh, see what do they need right now? Is there not enough water or in our situation, is there too much water sometimes? <laughs> um, right. Is there a deficiency of something in the soil here? Do they need to be pruned? Do they need to be staked up? Um, there's really constant attention, like you're attention. saying, uh -huh. every, every day, ideally, yes. if you want to really have healthy plants. And all of that are, <clears throat> provides lessons for us as we're talking about how, 
how we raise our kids. So I'm thinking of a funny story that happened with us. And it actually, this is really a <laughs> bad one on me. But when, when our oldest was just a little guy, a toddler, and we were trying to potty train him, um, we went on a trip, I think it was to see your folks. And on our way home, he had gotten a little bug, a tummy bug. And so he was struggling with that issue, um, going to the re- needing to go to the restroom, restroom often. Like every 10 minutes. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we had been right in the stages of potty training, and I wanted to be consistent <laughs> and not fall backwards because every mom knows that you just want to get through that phase alive and, and <laughs> move on from potty training. You had this... Um, <laughs> commitment here that you were not going to back off or s- stop. Yeah, so this is kind of an illustration to say consistency is important in parenting, but also flexibility and um, spontaneousness, being able to have that. I, I had this, I've got to be consistent. So we didn't, I did not want to put a, a pull-up on or a diaper to help him out. I said, like, he'll go backwards in potty training, so let's... Uh, just keep them in big boy pants and, and every every exit. We, we For a couple hundred miles, every single exit we were going over. I, I can't believe we're admitting <laughs> this. I'm admitting this. This is me. <laughs> but it this happened, a first-time parent, right? And I wanted to be so consistent. But I, in that situation, I should have been flexible. Put the pull-up on, <laughs> right? That's right. So anyways, that's just an illustration of where maybe we take it too far in some areas. but <clears throat> Absolutely consistent in our principles yes, and in those foundational things that um, we, we know can't be moved or shouldn't be moved. Exactly. But in some of the details, some flexibility Give, can be a good thing. Yes, too. yes. So the next C. Yeah, we also wanted to just talk about... Um, the tendency I think that we all have as human beings. Yes, it's human nature. Uh, and that is to compare ourselves with others. Mm-hmm. And we you know, we all fall into this trap to one degree or another from time to time. Yeah, but as we were talking about this, I really think it's one that moms especially, I will say, I, I do believe it's one that moms especially struggle with. I know you said, well, dads do too. And you can list your areas that you thought of pretty pretty quickly, (laughs) but the rest probably lands on moms. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, um, things like Facebook and social media. Mm, Don't always help, do they? Do not help this tendency that we can have uh, to compare my life with somebody else's life. That's right. And we can find it. Or we can become discontent very, very easily Mm -hmm. by looking at somebody else's fake life, right? Who puts their mistakes Mm -hmm. and their struggles and, you know, their silly or dumb things that they do. We don't post that online, right? Mm -hmm. We Mm -hmm. just put the happy stuff. Look what I'm doing today. Here's here's what my family's doing. And Mm -hmm. so we end up comparing ourselves with someone else's life that doesn't even really exist. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. We can get ourselves in a bad place very quickly. Yes, and, and Facebook can be used in a good way, and it can be a good tool. We want to make that clear. But yeah, that's one reason I have a Facebook account, but I have found that it's not the best for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, kind of gets me down. Uh, whether maybe I'm comparing or I don't know, maybe I'm sad <laughs> for some things I see. But anyways, um, I we see that parents, human nature is to compare. And we just want to encourage um, us, <laughs> all of us, to not do this. And especially for moms, I think it's a tendency to look at other families, other moms, other kids and think, oh, I need to be doing that. I need to be doing that. Oh, I haven't done that well enough or, or enough or most or any or, you know, I, my child's not like that or I'm not like that or I, I need to use that curriculum or that. And we can make ourselves dizzy and crazy. And some of that, um, I know this has been a tendency for humans, you know, forever, but some of this does come from the accessibility to information oh, that we have, yeah. which is a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get so many ideas if you're homeschooling. 
mm-hmm. endless hours that you can mm-hmm. get ideas um, if you're whatever you're into, right? There's so much information available and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but what we allow it to do to us can be dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. And so I want to just look at a couple of verses here um, because God's requirements of us are reasonable and doable. So um, can you do the 2 Corinthians 10, 12? Yeah. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's just not wise to compare yourself with another human being. And to be quite honest, it's setting the bar too low. I mean, we're not supposed to be like another person. We're supposed to be like him. So let's set the bar higher if we're going to do this comparing thing, right? Um, And then I love this story of Jesus with Mary and Martha, because to me it just, it fits so well here. Um, So he's in their home. They're very good friends. And Martha is busy working, getting a nice meal prepared, not doing a bad thing, right? And she's, she's getting a little bit frustrated, though, and so she says to Jesus, hey, my sister's not helping me. Can you please tell her to help me? And he, he tells her very gently, you know, Martha, you're cumbered with many things, but one thing is required. And what is that? What is the one thing? He tells, he said, Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. In other words, I'm not going to tell her to come help you. In this situation, I'm, she's doing the good part, what's all that I've required. And that was to sit at his feet and learn from him while he was there, you know? And so God doesn't require of us sometimes what we see in other people requiring of us. His, his standard, it's, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Um, yes, he requires a lot, <laughs> but his standard is high, but it's something attainable with his help. Well, that's just it. Anything mm-hmm. that God wants us to do, he will help us do, and he will enable us to do. Mm-hmm. If we find ourselves struggling with something that seems impossible, then perhaps that's one indication that uh, we're placing an expectation on ourselves that God never intended us to have to deal exactly. with. Exactly. Yeah, provision hasn't been made for that, for us to carry that. And that's why I think he was telling Martha, you're, you're worried about so many things. I only require this one thing. Come and learn of me right now. Well, and that's yeah. another very important point. And that is that um, we need that time with Jesus. Amen. You know, on a daily oh, basis. Yes. If we can keep that relationship with Jesus first and foremost, then that is going to go a long ways toward helping us um, not compare ourselves with others yes. and obviously deal with many other parts of our lives as well. Yes, keep our eyes fixed on Him and that daily relationship with Jesus and our private devotions, family devotions, and we can stop the horizontal looking and look vertically. That's right. Uh, Micah 6, verse 8 mm-hmm. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say anything in there about comparing us with anybody else or trying to do it like anyone else. Yeah, it's simple. Comes back to that Mm -hmm. uh, relationship with him. Amen. So we just want to encourage moms and dads and parents to to take that burden off yourselves. (laughs) It's not necessary. And we all just need that reminder yeah, sometimes. We all fall into it Yes, from time to time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a few minutes left. We wanted to just also share a few of the challenges that we have faced um, in uh, our family or our lives. And, you know, we all face challenges. It's mm-hmm. how we deal with those, how, what lessons we uh, can draw from those that can turn them from something really negative into something that actually can end up being a blessing. Amen. Yes. And um, we're not trying to say we've been through so much. <laughs> this isn't the point of it. We know there's always somebody else that's been through more. <laughs> that's We're not comparing with right. just sharing our personal experiences and what we've learned from them. So, yes. You wanted to share about your yeah. autoimmune challenges. 
Yeah, I do face one. Many people do right now for some reason. If we could figure out why people deal with autoimmune diseases um, and get over them, we'd be <laughs> in a good place. But yeah, shortly after we were married, really um, found out, I guess I was pregnant with our first and my thyroid started to go haywire. I know I think pregnancy can do this for ladies sometimes, um, make things go a little crazy. And so they said, you need to be on medicine while you're pregnant or it can affect the baby. So I got on medicine, and um, but they said I was borderline. So when I was not pregnant anymore, I uh, <clears throat> very unwisely <laughs> took myself off the medicine, thinking that, well, they said I was borderline, and it was only while I was pregnant. And uh, we were in the process of a move at the time, and I wound up on the couch. For several days. Uh, utterly exhausted. And I thought, this isn't going to work. I can't be a good wife or mother to our new baby and be laid up on the couch. So we had some visits to the doctor. <laughs> the doctor told you after he ran the tests, he was surprised you weren't in a coma. Yeah. Your numbers were so off. Yes. And I think that was just because I had gone off my medicine and things were really whack whacked out. But um, we got that under control and I, we're managing it now. Um, if I could do it without medicine, I would love to do it that way, but haven't been successful with that just yet. So that's a challenge we faced. Yeah. So what have you learned from that? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that there was a time um, I was looking at it too much and focused on poor me and what I'm going through. And when I did that, I can honestly say that I felt worse. And it, it's that my mental part of it. Um, when I started realizing, no, this is not that bad. Many people deal with much worse. Uh, I started realizing and taking my eyes off myself and focusing on others. And it goes away a lot more. I mean, I'm managing it with medicine. Uh, we're dealing with it, but without focusing on our on our own struggles and challenges, it goes a lot better. Focusing on others. Well, there's a definite connection between mm -hmm. the mind and you know our our bodies. Yes. Oh, definitely. Mental state affects your health. Yeah. Um, yes, we had a verse that that went with that. I feel like Philippians two verse four. Yes. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Yes. Get our eyes off of ourselves and put them on others, and it will do a lot better. And, and by the way, this is one of the big blessings that uh, God intends, I believe, from the family unit, the family structure, is that you have an opportunity every single day to focus on others rather than yourself. Yes. God designed. God designed. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. We've been through a few other things, but nothing worth complaining about. But no. what have you been through? Well, I've uh, had a couple of eye surgeries on, on my left eye. I've had a, a pterygium, which is where some of the white uh, flesh from the cornea starts growing over the iris. And if it goes too far, it can affect your vision. Affect your vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I uh, had this surgery done, done twice and... Um, Looks like it's still maybe needing to be done again. Yeah, mm -hmm. my eyes started giving me problems uh, a couple of years ago. It, um, anyways, may have to pay a visit to the doctor again at some point. But mm -hmm. one of the big lessons I learned from mm -hmm. that is that when I first became aware that there was something growing there, I was actually around 20 years old. Oh, wow. And uh, I ignored mm -hmm. it for over a decade mm. until it got so big that, you know, it had to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, don't, kind of an obvious lesson, right? Don't let problems go uh, unattended, whether they're physical or, or other issues in, in your, your life. marriage or family. Parenting. Yeah, if it's something that you have the ability to address and deal with, it's just like a weed that grows bigger yes. and bigger and gets harder and harder to pull out. Pull it out early. I sure wish I had gone in when I was 20 years old and had it taken yes. care of. Yes. Um, when I went in the second time, it was uh, a different doctor this time. And he was looking around and he said, 
wow, this is one of the biggest regrowths I've ever seen uh, on mm -hmm. this kind of thing. So I probably waited too long the second time too. <laughs> yeah. But a lesson there learned um, just in life is to pull the weeds out early on. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. definitely applies in parenting as well, right? <laughs> oh, if we yes. see character traits mm -hmm. in our children, um, don't just assume they're going to go away because they no. won't. No, um, they'll no. They'll get bigger and stronger. And, and they'll manifest in other ways. Tougher to deal with. Yes. And we've, we've faced something with one of our children, which I know many people uh, face. Pretty common. Uh, yeah. Pretty common challenges with learning. Um, one of our kids deals with dyslexia. And so it's something to deal with and to pray through and work through and figure out the best ways to help. Um, but it's nothing that can't be dealt with. Um, and one thing that our child has learned through this is perseverance. And, um, you know, honestly, it's not all bad for our kids to go through something difficult because when they learn, they can overcome them with God's help. Um, it will really put them ahead in life. Um, and, and you can help the other siblings to learn um, patience and uh, thoughtfulness towards others that are dealing with struggles. And some, so, whatever it is that you may struggle with, right, it can mm -hmm. actually end up being one of your greatest strengths. Yes, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think that's the point. Why God allows trials in our lives, challenges, is so that we we know where to turn, and um, they can become our greatest strengths in the end. James 1, verses 2 and 3 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, or uh, my version says, my translation says, when you have challenges. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, we're talking about that today. That's Why? Right. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. It can end up being an incredible blessing to us Yes. Um, if we allow it to bring us closer to God, trust in Him, work harder, right? Mm -hmm. um, apply ourselves. That's right. So whatever you're going through in your families, um, we hope that you'll be able to be more consistent tomorrow than you were today. And we hope that you will cease the comparing and that you'll find the blessing in the challenges that your family faces. That's right. And uh, God blessings to you as you build your family of faith. Families of Faith is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. Find us online at www.pathwaytoparadise.org.